Everyone, I just want to show you something quickly. I've been asked this question twice now. Uh, well, not this exact question, but close enough. And I, I really hate just giving an answer and like, oh, well, that's that's it. Like, I want to push on it and say, like, what's going on? Why is this the case? I don't want to just know what the answer is, but why it is what it is. Okay. So, humor me, please. What's the derivative of log x? What on x? Don't simplify it. Just tell me. What's the derivative of log 2x? 2 on 2x. You do chain rule. And that gives you that. We're not going to bother simplifying it. Okay. Log of 7x. 7 7x. 7 7 okay, so you're getting a bit tired of this, right? 100 on 100. Okay, now. What does this mean? Right? Why is it, like, it, have I done something wrong? Like, why is it that all of these derivatives are the same? Do I have a crap? Because if we look at the exponential function, when, you, when we derive the exponential function, what we get is the exponential function. Mm -hmm. The gradient has, well, in a way, it's proportional. To yes, yes, yes. Okay, good, good, good. So we're looking at logs right here, right? When we're looking at the flip, flip twin of, of logs, the exponentials, right, you differentiate that and you just keep getting the same thing back. right? So we shouldn't be that surprised that there is some kind of similar behavior here. Still doesn't get to the bottom though of what's going on, right? All of these are the same derivative, right? Now we already have language for this. If you go from these and you go in reverse, you're integrating, right? So you're integrating something like this, right? So which one of these is it? And the answer is, well, All of them. before we even learned about what integration was, we did anti-differentiation, right? And that's when we introduced this. Right, do you remember that? Where, where did this come from? Why did we introduce this? Before it was called the constant of integration, we learnt it about anti-differentiation. Why did it appear? Because it could, because it could fit into like, um, like the same graph, but shift it up and down. Exactly. When you look at this and you say, well, that's the gradient, tell me where I came from. Right? There's a whole bunch of different functions where you could have come from. We said there was a whole family of them. Right? So like for example, x squared plus 1, x squared plus 5, x squared plus 100, they're all in the same family of primitives, right? In other words, this, this, is these. Can you see? Can you see why? Think. Think about your logs. Is anyone connecting with it yet? Do you have a stab, Doris? Because um, log laws and then that's just log 100 plus which so, is a constant. Oh. if you remember your log laws, which admittedly, we haven't spent all that much time revising because I hope that they come out as you work on them, right? What a log is, is it's amount of time, right? However long it takes you to grow to 100 times your size and then x times your size, right? Or you could just grow for that amount of time and then that amount of time separately, right? But look at this guy. It's just a constant. In fact, all of these... The, the 1, the 2, the 7, the 100, even though they look like they're multiplying, they are not multiplying, they are adding. That's the way logs work, right? So therefore, actually, in fact, if we were to graph all of these, they just all sit on top of each other at varying distances, long distances, okay? So just think carefully about the results you get. Like, if you look at this and you think, I think I'm doing something wrong, but I'm convinced I'm doing it right. Try and dig to the bottom of it, right? There's, there's something going on there. If you remember your log laws, that will help you a lot index laws as well for the same reason.